What happens when you want to skateboard and snowboard at the same time? You keep dreaming. The idea for freeboard actually came from a dream. I'd grown up doing a lot of skateboarding and I'd recently started snowboarding and, and if you do both those activities you really start to understand how they differ. Anyone who's snowboarded before, you know that, that the freedom of motion that comes from skidding and sliding is just this really cool thing to experience and so the idea of having that in a skateboard, I was just half asleep one morning and it, and it came to me. The concept was freeboard, neither skateboard nor snowboard but a hybrid of both. The Harvard grad was convinced that if he could get the snowboard motion onto the street, people would want it. We have our guys that, you know, are avid snowboarders and, you know, that are looking for something to literally mimic snowboarding and you don't have to go up to a mountain and, uh, you know, pay lift tickets and um, they get it, 100%. Freeboard six wheels mean that the two inner wheels act like the base of a snowboard, allowing for the sliding motion, while the four extended outer wheels act as edges for carving on pavement rather than snow. Foot bindings on top complete the freeboard design. Strand started designing the first freeboard in 1995 while doing a master's degree in product design at Stanford University in California. But with a background in high finance at Lehman Brothers rather than building boards, it's fair to say his first efforts didn't quite hit the mark. And I look back on our early boards and they're just a joke to me, right? But you put something out there and you start building up some sales and some enthusiasm and then you use that momentum to then go back in and redesign and keep evolving the product till you get to something that really can become the foundation of, a, of an ongoing category. And that can take years because there's so much knowledge and revisioning that has to go on. So he did what many entrepreneurs have done, went to work in the garage to fine tune the product and went into debt. By 1999, Strand had started freeboard manufacturing based in a warehouse in San Francisco. And it's not just the board design that changed over the years. The average freeboarder has changed a bit over time, but I think if you start with a snowboarder, 16 to 24 year old, uh, male, somebody who is willing to try something new and different. The average freeboarder though now is definitely getting younger. We're seeing 12, 13, 14 year old kids on the board. We never saw that. There is a little bit of a pioneer kind of maverick to our sport where people like to be recognized because they are doing something new and different. The boards retail for $230. Fairly steep for a skateboard, but cheap for a snowboard. But not everyone is convinced the product can carve a niche for itself. They're really trying to come into a space that's been, that consumers have been skeptical of traditionally. You know, people feel like, hey, the skateboard industry is the skateboard industry. We don't need to reinvent the skateboard. You know, what's this next, you know, kooky new device coming out? What they don't want is they don't want to see a gimmick or a toy. So you need to earn, you know, you just need to earn the respect that you're not a gimmick or you're not a toy. And we're doing that slowly, but, you know, there's definitely a lot of resistance and we're going we're gonna to have a lot of resistance for a long time. In 2005, Freeboard reached a turning point. From an annual growth rate of 5 to 10%, the company had 150% growth. Freeboard's secret weapon, its community of riders, became known through the magic of video. Video was a huge part of 2005. I mean, we had all of a sudden, you know, YouTube hasn't been around that long, so all of a sudden video became a huge part of what we were doing. It was the first time that we were able to articulate to a wider audience, except for just the word of mouth, which is how we were growing until then. Now the company's biggest challenge may be its role as the lone pioneer in a brave new sport. They're really creating an entire category. There's a lot of what snowboarding went through when it was starting up very early on. People don't really know about it. It's not already out there. So while they're kind of a big fish in that small pond, this pond is still very small and they've got it. It's their responsibility really to grow, not just a brand, but grow an entire sport. You think about snowboarding or skateboarding, they had other companies that were all pulling their resources together to develop a category. We don't have that. Although the recession has slowed growth to between 20 and 30 percent, Freeboard has responded by selling directly to its riders who are now located in 27 countries around the world. And it's the riders, both as customers and as trailblazers in this new sport, who hold the key to Freeboard's future. And what the riders have done, they've just taken the board so far beyond where I ever would have dreamed it could go, both in terms of riding and blasting down hills at 50 miles an hour, they're doing these crazy tricks, they're doing all this, they're throwing their body in, in harm's way at every turn, right? It's just the sort of passion and commitment that they bring to the whole company is so far beyond what I could have anticipated. It, it, it's just really cool.